Who doesn't love to go to a fairground? It's not every day a fairground comes to your town, but when it does, it's, it's very special. And when you go to a fairground with the music, the lights, the rides, the girls and the boys screaming, it's an atmosphere you could never buy. Being a showman fetches joy and laughter to everybody's life. It's very important to bring that happiness to everybody's life. The Americans would cut their right arm off to have a charter fair in the United States of America. Here we go now. Slowly, the 2020 was a year like no other. Our world changed, with businesses and authorities trying to find new ways in which we could thrive but stay safe. For showmen, it meant the end of the fun of the fair. It's been horrendous. It's been horrendous. Our wheels haven't gone out the yard at all. We haven't operated. Um, we was hoping to get out and start again in September at the Oxford St Giles. Fingers were crossed tightly for that. Never happened. To see the rides parked up in the yards is a very sad sight for, for us showmen. Go out in February and we don't come back until the winter time. So to see the rides packed up in gathering dust is heartbreaking. The showman industry is one of the oldest industries in the UK entertaining the nation non-stop since the Middle Ages. Even during war years, funfairs still ran. Nothing had stopped them until COVID-19. The impact of the coronavirus pandemic that has had on our industry has been devastating, as well as every other business. But my granddad fought in World War II and my grandma continued the business. She was able to operate her stalls um, while well, he was at war and, and that was something that was asked of her. Um, you know, fairgrounds were still put on to provide the entertainment to, to, and to lift the spirits of people in, in the war. Through the wars, uh, the government actually uh, commissioned fun fairs to open, to lift the spirits of, of people. And, and I'd like to think that would be our job again, that hopefully we'd be able to lift the spirits of the people through after this terrible pandemic. Originally, the fairs began as street markets, trading goods, offering entertainment, and for the hiring and firing of staff, such as farmhands. As time moved on, there would be traveling theaters, menageries, freak shows, and boxing booths. The showman industry has led the way in pioneering entertainment. Cinemas owe much of their success to showmen of the late 1800s as they introduced bioscopes or travelling cinemas to fairgrounds. Everybody would come from the surrounding villages into the main town. There would be entertainment, and it's the fun fair. There would be a market, and people would hire people to work on their farms. If they didn't get on very well with them or they wouldn't good workers, the following week they'd bring them back, and then they'd fire them and hire again. This Slow Fair was granted by King Henry I back in the 11th century and it's been going on for generations and generations. People have attended um, for, for years and our children hopefully will attend this fair in years to come. Primitive forms of rides trace their history back to the 6th century. In the late 1700s, manually operated carousels began to appear on British fairgrounds. In 1861, Thomas Bradshaw invented the steam-powered carousel and pioneer of the fairground, Frederick Savage, began manufacturing carousels, introducing the galloping motion of the horses. 160 years later, carousels remain an icon of the British fairground. Our family, the Noyces family, have a carousel ride and it was his grandfather's and then his father's and now it's my husband's ride and hopefully one day our little five-year-old will run them as well. We have people send their photographs to say, when are you back in? Because my little girl, my granddaughter, I need to bring down and have the picture on the horse and the same horse. One can only imagine what those early pioneers of rides must think of today's feats of engineering. Here we go now.
chart affairs are a coveted part of showman life. For 900 years, the monarchy have been granting charters to hold fairs in towns and cities across the UK. The nature of a royal charter means they can't be stopped and carry on in perpetuity. Charter fairs lose their protected status if the fair doesn't happen or the reigning monarch calls for the charter to be cancelled. During World War I and World War II, many charters were protected by the attendance of a single ride or side stall. In fact, the government called upon showmen to put on some fairs to raise the spirits of the nation. Rides were often enclosed to ensure no light could spill out and be seen by enemy aircraft. The Showman's Guild paid for a Spitfire and a number of ambulances to help with the war effort. The charter fairs are very special and um, they mean everything to our community. If anybody lives in a village and that they have done for generations, they can class their fair as their fair, not just us. We may be outsiders coming in, but they should look on it and cherish it as to say our fair's coming to town. This is our charter and this is our special time. Despite putting in COVID safety measures, in accordance with government guidelines, local councils prevented the majority of fairs in 2020 from going ahead. This is against the backdrop of car boot sales, theme parks and markets still operating. Many markets took place on the day a charter fair should have been held, with stalls selling non-essential goods on the very spot where showman families have presented rides or stalls for generations, leading some to believe they're being discriminated against. From the evidence I have seen, it appears they are right to feel that way, because they are being discriminated against. What else is it when government guidance as of the 4th of July said travelling fairs could operate under all tiers with some up to 2,000 people? Yet, time and time again, they are turning up, getting ready, and at the 11th hour, overzealous local councils of public health are telling them to close down altogether. Many of those visiting fairs across the country also couldn't understand why councils have been saying no. A safe and enjoyable day out for families. The fun fair rolling into town is one of the highlights for many, many people, and showing the work so hard to make a living in the last year. They've done everything that's been required of them from sanitizer stations to track and trace to fencing off fairs to covid marshals to washing down the rides far from being just family-owned businesses being a showman is a way of life fearful not just of the financial impact of the pandemic but also of the threat to their culture six show women joined forces to create future for fairgrounds to fight for their existence Myself and the other five ladies, I think we're trying to raise awareness about our industry um, for people who don't understand our way of life. Future for Fairgrounds have gained the support of a number of MPs, helping to raise awareness of the plight of their industry with central government. Future for Fairgrounds. And Future for Fairgrounds. Future for Fairgrounds. And they did that as wives and mothers proud of their heritage, but increasingly concerned about the impact in the future for their families and that of the 20,000 showmen across the United Kingdom. Some local authorities have enacted strict bans and others are being more lenient in allowing some fairs to go ahead. I encourage and expect local authorities to allow fairs and other events to go ahead unless there are health risks that cannot be mitigated. For the 2021 census, Future for Fairgrounds encourage their community to put down their ethnic background as showmen so as to become a recognised ethnicity within the UK. We're not recognised in local authorities as showmen. We need the showman's box in, in education, in planning, in health and in financial, you know, difficulties. Fun fairs are as much as part of British heritage as a castle or Morris dancers or tea and crumpets. Many towns and cities are known for their charter fair. Hull Fair is one of the biggest such events in the UK and the council embraces and welcomes its heritage. Although the 2020 Hull Fair was cancelled, the charter was upheld by the attendance of a single children's ride and the reading of the charter by the city mayor and the showman's guild. I am absolutely honoured and delighted to be here this morning to acknowledge Hull Fair Charter Day. The tradition of Hull Fair is ingrained in everybody who lives in Hull. Only for our choppy apples, get away alive. Everyone's a winner. I'm 88 years old. 
I'm the oldest working tenant at uh, Old Fair. Still got me every good driving license. Still enjoy the job, but I do really miss it. Not being here this year uh, with all the fun of the fair. It's not just a busy fair, it's where you might meet your partner who you go on to marry. Our kids, our kids have got the whole fair blues because there is no whole fair on. And we're just hoping to be back next year. With showmen passing on the family business from generation to generation and visiting the same towns and villages for centuries, they feel as much a part of the community as someone who lives there 365 days a year. Yes, 100% I feel we're part of the community. We go to the same, same places year in, year out. And yet people still come by and think they're all fair people who, who just come in the middle of the night. There's not many people in this village or this town. It's been here as long as we've been coming in. For centuries, funfairs have played their part in supporting the local economy of the towns and villages they entertain. Walking on a fairground, whether it's a large street fair or a small village green, it's much like walking along your local high street. It's not just one person who owns a fairground, it's different families that all come to open on a fairground. For you to come and have a go on our rides, to have a go on our hooker duck stalls, it's, it just means so much to us. You're putting a smile on another family's face, or you're putting food on their table. Contrary to popular belief, rides are regularly safety tested, having what could be described as an annual car MOT inspection. Another common myth is that fairs just turn up in the middle of the night unannounced and disappear a few days later. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It takes a year to plan the next, the next season, the next season tour with the fun fair. But there's more to fun fairs than just the money. Immeasurable impact comes on mental well-being of visitors and families enjoying all the fun of the fair. One of the world's oldest ride manufacturers, Zamperla of Italy, commissioned a study into the benefits of going on rides. There is no doubt that ride and attraction enable people to experience and share the positive emotions and pleasant moments which help counteract stress, anxiety and depressions. Fairground business is so important, not only to my family and myself, but also the general public. It's a way of entertainment for people on the outside to get fresh air and be all the family together. It's so important not only for families but also people who are lonely because so many people don't see anybody else but they can come to the fairground, get involved and see people entertaining themselves, the colour, the lights, the music. Showmen are proud of their ability to entertain the nation bringing much-needed happy memories to the residents of towns and villages across the UK. They bring lights, they bring music, they bring happiness to a local town or a local village. Um, some children don't get to be taken to amusement parks and when a fairground comes to their town, it's something special and something for children to look forward to. With the journey on the government's roadmap out of lockdown well underway, fun fairs are starting to reopen. Local authorities at the moment, in the last two weeks, they seem to have took a U-turn. Um, they're speaking to us now, they're taking our phone calls, they're looking at our paperwork, they're checking our COVID risk assessments, they're looking at our hand sanitizing stations. They are supporting us and they're working with us to make sure that we can open safely. Future for Fairgrounds and the rest of the showmen would like to say thank you to the local authorities that have allowed us to open, also the private landowners that have given us the chance to prove that we can run a fairground, we are COVID safe, and that we are a good, happy place to be for families to come out and enjoy themselves in the fresh air. For the showman community and the ladies of Future for Fairgrounds, being back open and a sense of their way of life returning means a great deal. I haven't stopped smiling since I walked through the gate. It's great to be open again, great to be back to work, great to be serving the public again. All big smiles. Feels amazing. I can't tell you how happy I am. It's like being in a nightclub when you're 18, you know, you just hear the music, you hear the generators, you hear the kids screaming, laughing. I've got goose pimples to prove it, that's how it feels. Everybody's seen people they haven't seen for a long time and everybody's getting a few bob. It's lovely. After all the challenges the global pandemic has brought, the showman community has done what they always have, adapted, supported their country and bounced back. It's what we do, isn't it? All the fun of the fair, yeah, it's what we do.